Hello and welcome again to uh, Django tutorial. And uh, in our previous tutorial, we were looking at ja uh, we created a Docker file uh, that uh, kind of tells Docker in which images it's going to pull and the working directory and installation of dependencies. And then you can have a quick uh, review of that. So this is a Docker file that we created. And uh, in this particular step, we are going to create the Docker uh docker compose so uh docker what, what is docker compose docker compose is a i would refer to it as a is an inclusion or it's a tool within the docker ecosystem that is used in managing multiple images so for example we are working in the particular tutorial we'll be working with django and postgresql so these are two they are going to be running in two different images or in two, these are two different containers rather uh, for Docker. And uh, how can we manage those two containers? Initially, if you're using the command line interface directly, you can execute a Docker command saying Docker run, uh, PostgreSQL, Docker run, you know, Python or something like that. And it's going to pull it and run it. But what if you want to manage these different containers? And this is where Docker Compose comes in handy. And uh, it works with the, the what you call the YAML file, the YML file, or YAML file. And uh, basically, it tells Docker what to uh, the, the containers and the services that it's going to, to run them. And we are going to create it uh, at this step. So allow me to create it in a manual way. So we'll just call it Docker compose.yml. So this is a kind of standard procedure, the naming, but you can call it something else.yml, but you will need to tell Docker which file it's going to look for. But So that's why docker compose.yml will automatically be checked. The Docker is going to look at this file automatically. Uh, so that's why we are naming it docker compose.yml. So I'll also add it under Code, uh, code our code, uh, version control, and uh, the first command or the first item that we are going to add is the version. So this version, as of now, it is uh, the latest version is of 3.9, and I'm just going to digress a little bit and move into Docker Compose. Docker Compose inside the Docker file. So I'm. Um, um, if you want to understand more about Docker Compose and what you are doing, uh, refer to this link. I'm going to share this link in the description below. So I'm using this version 3.9. And this is where I actually got the idea for how to create a, a Docker Compose uh, file. And also it works hand in hand with the Docker file. So yeah, so our next uh, procedure will be adding the services. So the first service that we are looking at, I will call it a database. Uh, some people call it DB, uh, but I'll call it database. And then under database, uh, let me just start online there. And under database, we have the image. So the image that we are looking at, I had already done some research prior to this uh, recording and uh, I'm using, I want to use Postgres, but uh, there are so many Postgres flavors as well. You have Postgres running inside Alpine, uh, Postgres running in Bullseye Debian. Alpine is also another Linux version or a Linux distro. So I'll just get uh, this Postgres, the main Postgres uh, image. So, I, when I was testing, I tested it using the, Alp, I think, believe Alpine, and uh, I had some issues. I think it was not coming up quickly, but that is a story for another day. So I'll just use what I, uh, what I is working uh, works for me. So I'll use the Postgres fourteen point three. Uh, you can also add latest if you want to use your latest Postgres. This is the latest Postgres as of now. You can. Uh, add that and then we have the environ environment variable there's one very important environment variables that such that if we don't add it it's not the uh, postgres 
is going to fail to run or to come up. So let me just navigate back to the description. Yeah, we have what you call the Postgres password. This is a very important environment variable that we need to add, and that's why I'm adding this and the uh, environment uh, in the Docker file. So you can read more in the Docker Hub for Postgres. So in our environment, I'm going to add what you call Postgres password, as you have seen it there. So you can copy and paste if you want. So I'll just put the password to be by default Postgres. And uh, since you're not in a production environment, that's why I'm doing this. Otherwise, in your production environment, you may have to use other passwords. So we have something else that is called volume. Uh, you can read more about Docker volumes, but what I can explain is that Docker volumes are used to persist data. Uh, basically, or normally the containers, uh, let me create, use that, that typo. So in normally, when you run containers, the data that is uh, in those containers or the data that is being generated or saved in the containers is uh, what I would say rather temporary or read only. So you need to persist this data. If you're collecting data about users or if you have a logged in user and you want to add their profile somewhere in a data in a system, so you'll need to have a volume to persist that data such that if you the containers are pulled down or the containers are stopped then and rerun again, then they will be able to access that data. Uh, that was saved somewhere. So that's why we have this concept of volume. The, uh, the work of volumes is persisting of data. Yeah. So I'll I'll call it Postgres data. I believe that's what is normally this is normally what many people use, but I think you can name it as you please. So in these we have VR uh, lib lib. Postgres SQL, then we have data. So uh, what is this? So this is our, this will be a directory in our machine, in our host machine, in our local computer. And this directory will be ref referring to this directory, which is inside the container. So this is a directory that is inside our container, but this is a, uh, uh, host host machine or the host uh, folder that is going to be there. It's not here, but it's going to be created. So whenever if we put, we restart Postgres or we stop Postgres and then we start it again, then it will be able to pick uh, these the data that has been persisted or saved here in this other uh, and uh, into this its own uh, data. So that way we are not going to lose any data. That's why I'm talking about persisting. So for details on that, you can refer to the to the documentation on Docker volumes. And I'm going to share that as well in the uh, link in the description below. So we have what you call uh, the next service. The next service will be the web part. So we have uh, completed the database part. And uh, for the web part, what we are going to do, uh, we are going to our first command will be build basically telling Docker where to uh, build. This is similar to the Docker command whereby you say Docker uh, compose uh, build, or I think Docker build. Uh, so the dot indicates that it's in this local uh, the home folder, this local directory, the same directory in which we have the Docker compose file. Then we have the command. So we are going to execute uh, the command to bring up the server, which is python uh, manage.py. But, but remember that which directory are we using? I'll refer you back to the, the Docker file. So the directory that we are pointing to, or we are executing it from, since we are executing it inside the container, should be this website. So we'll start with Python uh, website, and you'll notice that the directory name is it's in the root, that's why we are starting with this slash and another slash at the end. Then we'll have manage.py on our run server command. And then we need it, it the run server requires, uh, in this case, a uh, URL, and we will just set it to localhost. 
and the, re the reference for localhost is that 000, uh, and then we will add the port number, which is the 8000, actually, which is the default port that it normally uses. And we will also add a volume reference in this as well. And the volume will be in this folder. Uh, let me explain something. We have a dot. Uh, the dot show simply tells our computer or the container that it will refer to the local file, the local file system. So that dot is this folder here. And then the inside the container, it will be called a website. Okay. So this is our volume. So this is where it persists its data, if any. And uh, like now, if we are going to create templates, where are these templates going, going to be? If we change the template or if we change the settings file, how, how can it be able to pick up? So it's going to make this reference. So whenever you see this colon, just like here, not, uh, whatever is on the left is uh, refers to the host machine and whatever is on the right refers to the container, okay, to the Docker container. So the next item will be our port, uh, port reference to the port. So we have port and uh, our port, I, I want to run this in my local host instead of uh, running it in port 8000. So inside the container, it will still run in port 8000 because that is what I've stated here. This is still inside the container, but it's going to uh, point to the, in my local machine, it's going to run on port 80, which is a default uh, HTTP uh, port. So we have the ports and then we also need to add something else, depends on, and we'll add, it depends on this database, because indeed it does, going to make reference to this database. And uh, the final thing that we are going to add on the upper uh, high level, the upper level is the uh, volume. So for the volumes, we have the volume that uh, we are calling uh, Postgres data, so I can actually just, Copy and paste it there. And then, yeah, I think uh, that's it. So, so, yeah, so we have defined uh, the version. Then we have also defined our services. And there are two services. We have the database service and the web service. And uh, inside the database, uh, the database image that we are going to use is Postgres 14.3, which is going to be pulled from the Docker Hub, as I had the, the website that I have shown you. And there's one mandatory uh, environment variable that we need to have, which is this Postgres. And then the volume where it's going to persist its data. We have Postgres data in our local or in our host machine. And then we have uh, this folder in our uh in our container and you can see this is a linux path this is where postgres stores its data by default so we also have the inside the web uh service we have the build so we are going to build uh with reference to the uh docker file that is inside this folder so it's in this folder that's why we had that we have added a dot and then we have the command the command that you're going to run, this is synonymous to the command that we run, python manage.py run server. So it's running in the local host and inside the port 8000. And then we have volumes. So this volume, this application, this application resides in this folder in our local machine, which is the current directory. And then it uh, refers, inside the container, it's uh, referred to as the website. So whenever we update anything here, like HTML files, settings, and all that, it's going to be able to uh, pick up and uh, you know affect those changes. So we have the ports. Uh, locally, it's going to run on our in our host machine. It's going to run in port 80, which points to or which references to each port 8000 inside the container, and uh, it depends on the on this database uh, service. And then we have the volume. So if you have other additional volumes, you may notice this. You may realize that you may have this syntax with many other volumes here. Yeah, so that 
uh, this uh, we have been able to create the Docker in the Docker Compose file. So let's our final thing we have for, uh, that I may have forgotten. You see, we have state we have added these as Postgres password. So, but in our settings.py file, for those who are familiar with Django, and they can refer to it, we have inside the databases we have this. It normally refers to the local database, SQLite database, and that's why you can see it here. When we run the manage Python manage run server, we it created automatically created this database, and we do not we are not using it. So I'm just going to change a few things here. So instead of referring to SQLite, we're going to refer to Post PostgreSQL, and uh, the name of this database. For now, we are going to just set it as uh, Postgres, and then we have the password. the database not sure which comes first but it's one or the other and then we'll add a colon so this is a dictionary if you look at it the python dictionary these databases and yeah. so we have the database which is also called postgres we'll add a, co a comma and then we'll also add the password and uh, the password just as you have added it in this docker compose file is postgres and then we'll add the host the host is uh, uh, 127.0.1 so which is local host anyway and then we have the port so for the port number we're going to refer to the default port for Postgres, which is 5432. And we'll set it as that. I'm not sure if this host should be left, it should be a string, or I may have forgotten a little bit, but nevertheless, we'll see. Let's see what happens. So let me clear this screen. Now, the other thing that you need to confirm, remember we are in a Windows environment, whether you're on Windows or Linux, we have this Docker desktop. So it needs to be running. So you need to run it. So if it's not running, you can just search it here and you know just ensure that it is running. So when if it's running, you can be able to see or access this dashboard here. So this is what we have. So it needs to be running. Otherwise, if it is not, then it's gonna complain. You're gonna get some error that it cannot find that Docker. So since we have uh, completed these two files, we can be able to pull our uh, containers and uh, one way to do that is uh, just running the docker compose uh, app i can use this dash d to run it in a detached mode but i i would really uh, let me actually use it in run it in detached mode because we are going to use this docker desktop to see what containers and what is going on Yeah, so it is complaining that volumes must be a mapping. Uh, okay. So let me leave it as it is, as that. Uh, let's see what it will show. Yeah, so it is running. Now what it's doing, uh, it's pulling the database. So it's pulling this Postgres image. And uh, you'll notice these many things that are showing waiting and downloading. These are layers. These are the layers that uh, constitute the Postgres uh, or the, this, this database service. Yeah. So if you're pulling a very big kind of uh, image or it may take some time, but in this case, it's going to take some some few probably seconds or some few minutes so this is what is happening in there this is the command line interface okay. uh, but uh, this is what you can you can also use docker to look at what is going on so see it has not yet completed pulling that image so we'll wait and see okay so now it's pulling the it has completed pulling the database and it's pulling the 
<coughs> Python image from uh, Docker Hub. Yeah, so the advantage of Docker Desktop is that you see now, like this can be especially for beginners. You know, it can be scary, and you know, they or it's somebody does not understand what is going on here. You're just seeing building, pulling Docker, uh, Python, Slim Buster, and all these things. So the advantage of uh, the Docker Desktop is that it kind of shows the it gives you a highlight of what is going on. Like right now, we have been able successfully able to pull the Postgres version 14.3. You remember we had added this in the Docker file, and the image ID uh, is at as I think is at as it appears here, and the day that, that it was created and the size in our computer. And uh, let me go back to the yeah. So you see it has in fact it's pointing to the work directory. It's also looking at uh, copying the ppen and it's running the, it's installing the commands using uh, the ppen. As in this, you remember these instructions, we had already added them inside the, our Docker file. So building uh, these things can take some time. But yeah. And I also wanted us to refer to these last steps. You'll see that it has created a network. There's some, you can refer to the Docker network documentation uh, but we're not going to look at that for now so we have this volume it has created a volume that is called my website postgres data you'll notice that our folder is called my website so it is a prefix for even the network my website underscore default my website this my website that so the container is called my website database uh, hyphen one and we have a container called my website web so these are two containers and uh, we can either we can also look at them here by running docker ps which shows the containers that are running and their details but if you are uh, you're not the command line interface kind of person you can use this the docker dashboard to check uh, the docker desktop to check so we have we have this my website that is running and it contains two two containers you can actually click on one of them and it's going to show the to display the log file if i'm not wrong here so you can see like the last command in the log file is postgres initialize process complete and it's ready for startup and then if you look at the other one which is the web yeah, the web has a Actually, we have an error. Error loading psycho PG module, no module named psycho PG2. And uh, I'm going to show you how we are going to uh, fix that error uh, in our next uh, tutorial. But nevertheless, we have been able to run this. And uh, one thing that you'll also note, whenever, let's go and open our local host. Local host, we're going to see yeah, actually, it's not going to open because of this error. Actually, let's just fix. Let's try and see if we can fix this error on the on the spot. So, how can we do this? So, I'll use in this case, I'll use the command line interface. So, uh, there's a. Let me just refer you back to the error. It is saying that error loading psycho PG two module. So, this psycho PG two module is what is used by. Uh, Python, or in this case, Django, to connect to our database. Okay, so it's not we do not have it. How do I? How can I tell? I'll just make reference to the pip file that we have locally, and you know that uh, it only we only have Django. We do not have Psycho PG two. So I'll just open the Psycho PG two inside the Python package index, and I'll. Called Psycho PG2. I think nowadays we normally use the Psycho PG2 binary. So let me just add that. Yeah, so we will take this version of Psycho PG2 binary and I will install. Okay, there is this version. I'll stick to this one. 
I'll stick to this one. And I know that this is a version. So I'll, I'm going to use ppenv to install, but I'm not going to install it in this, in this local environment. I'm going to install it inside Docker. Because if I install it inside here, this file, they may conflict with the, uh, with the pip file uh, lock. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to open a new terminal or a new command window. Uh, so I'll use Docker. Compose. Let me first ensure that it is running when I run it. Yeah. So I'll type in Docker Compose. Compose. And then we have the exec command. I want to execute a command inside the container. And which container am I using? I want to execute it inside the web container, not the database container. I know that it is called web. Uh, let me just confirm using the dashboard. Yeah, image ID and all that. So let me just try and add web as it shows there. And then I will run the pip env install cycle pg to binary and the version, which is 2.93. So let's see what happens. Uh, let, me, let me look at the logs. So it is installing. Let's see if anything changes. And uh, one way to know that here in the root in the container, you'll see that here we have a root it's saying root folder, and you'll see that it has updated the pip uh, the pip file. So let's see our logs. Well, just put this side by side. So what I can do, I can restart this container from here. Let's see. Okay, so it seems uh, that it's still showing us the same same problem so what we will do we will rebuild these we will uh, stop the containers and start them again but uh, i normally i'm very comfortable with using the command line so i'll just uh, use docker compose stop uh, not stop but uh, down And it will stop these containers, and you will see. Yeah, you see the in the dashboard there, they have been stopped. But we still have the images and the volumes, but the container is the one that has been stopped. So I'll just use the Docker Compose app, uh, detached mode, and then I'll also add two dashes and a build command. Okay, it's not very visible, but there's a D and uh, for detached so that you can run in the background, and then we have build. So it's going to rebuild the container using the now having cycle PG2. It's like rebuild, we are rebuilding. And it should not take a long time because it's not pulling these images uh, as it did in the first time. It will still use those, the same images that. So we so the good thing about Docker is that you can also be able to monitor your the logs. So as you have seen, you can tell where the error is coming from from using the log file, and uh, that is quite good because it helps the devs in monitoring and knowing where the problem is. Yeah. And that way we can also be able to like now you see we have shut down we have uh, 
you know, you don't you do not have to go maybe to the database and delete the database or going to the container. I mean, going to file system here and starting changing to change things and yeah. So it really help. It has really helps a lot. Let's see. And they're up and running. So let me click this and see what we have in our log files. And uh, I can also try and check my local host if so. It's not running, so I'm just going to stick to this <coughs> uh, dashboard for Docker, and I'm going to look at uh, let's call, look at the database. So the database is up and running, and it's running in port five four three two. Let me check the. Yeah, so it is saying that connection to port 5432 failed, uh, connection refused. So because of this error, we are going to see how we can fix it in our next uh, tutorial, okay? Yeah, uh, but we have been able to start our containers, build our containers and start uh, the two services for the web and PostgreSQL. And uh, uh, this, uh, we have also been able to pull images as you can see we have my website and postgres and then we have inside our we have our volume uh, volumes and this is a volume uh, data and it also shows the status in which whether it's being used or not so we are going to revisit this and fix the issue that we have with the connectivity connecting to the database uh, but uh, nevertheless we have been able to Start the containers and build our images. So, if you like this tutorial, please share, uh, like, and more so subscribe to my channel for more content. And uh, also, don't forget to click the like or the bell icon. Uh, so, whenever I upload new content, you can be able to check it out. Uh, let's meet our next tutorial. And uh, thank you for watching.